Today I'd like to show you some of the steps that are used in the balancing of chemical equations. I'll show the information up on the board here. I'll go through a number of equations, show you how I do it stepwise, and uh, this way you'll have a little bit more uh, help on, in illustrations of what the steps are in addition to your text uh, material. The first reaction that I have is a reaction that uh, I showed just the other day in a demonstration where we take some sulfur and uh, I actually did this in a fume wood, had a metal can, put sulfur on top of it, heated it up. The sulfur then reacted with the oxygen in the air and produced a white smoke that was sulfur dioxide. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to start off by making a little chart where I can keep track of all the uh, uh, atoms that are involved in the reaction. So let me list the atoms that are shown in the equation up here. Sulfur, oxygen, very simple. And then I want to take a look and look at the subscripts that I have and also enter coefficients where they're needed. On both sides of the equation, over here and on the reactant side with the O2, I have a total of two oxygens. So I'll put a two on both sides of that symbol O to represent the oxygens. There's two on each side, they're even. Sulfur, there's one here, there's one here. So I'll put a one next to the sulfurs. So everything matches up perfectly. They're all balanced, all the atoms are accounted for. So the final step for me, and hopefully for you, is to put down coefficients that would show that the equation is balanced. And for that purpose, I'm gonna enter a coefficient of one in front of each of the substances. That accounts for one atom of sulfur, Oops. one molecule of oxygen, and one molecule of sulfur dioxide. And the uh, accounting process, or the bookkeeping on the atoms here, shows that they are matched on both sides. Now, I'm going to show you some more reactions. Uh, I'll put them on the board up here and work them out. And between the setups of the equations, I'm going to just pause the video and then come back and turn it on for you. Here's the next reaction I'd like to show you. This is a combination of two gases, hydrogen, H2, chlorine, and, and that's Cl2, to make hydrogen chloride. And the hydrogen chloride is used to make hydrochloric acid. What we do is we take the HCl and we uh, bubble it into uh, water, and that makes the acid for us. And we've used hydrochloric acid a number of times in the lab. Um, I'm going to set up the uh, atoms and do the accounting process once again, and then I'll quickly tell you a story towards the end. So let me list all the atoms that are in the compounds up here. Hydrogen, chlorine. On each side of the reaction, I'm going to try to keep count of each atom. On the hydrogen side, I've got two hydrogens here. On the HCl side, the product side, I have only one. So what I'll do is I'll introduce a coefficient in front of the HCl to make two hydrogens. So I'll put a two in front of this. I now have two H's on each side, so they're even. As soon as I put the coefficient of two in front of the HCl, that's two chlorides also. And so I'll put a two in my bookkeeping list for the chlorine. And on this side, I have two CLs already, so I'll put a two there. So my action, my reaction is matched. The, to, the total, total atoms on each side is two and two. I'll put coefficients here of one and one. And I already have the two in here to show that there are two hydrogen chlorides listed. When you see a two in front of a compound or any number in front of a compound, that means that you have two of those, uh, two of those entities. So in other words, I have an HCl and then I have another HCl. That accounts for the two molecules of each element, of each uh, compound that we have. A little quick story on this. Um, one of the first times I saw this reaction being done was over at the University of Pittsburgh. 
Uh, there was a group of us teachers gathered together, and they were going to demonstrate uh, how the reaction occurs. Now, a lot of compounds, when you put them together, you have to heat them or something like that. Well, this reaction, you can energize it by a flash of light. Something like a camera flash that would go off could energize this reaction. So the demonstrator took a balloon, clear looking balloon, filled it with hydrogen, took a second balloon, filled that with chlorine, and then he connected the two balloons together so that they could blend the gases. And he was able to push the two gases into one balloon, made it a little bit bigger. He then put that into a fume hood and uh, the reason why, HCl was going to be produced, and HCl is pretty active with your uh, respiratory system, your nose, your throat, uh, can make it cough pretty, uh, pretty vigorously. And uh, we all stood around and watched the reaction. They turned the fume hood on, and then he came up to the balloon, took the camera, aimed it towards the balloon, uh, clicked the flash, it went off, the balloon exploded with a flash, and suddenly within the fume hood, there was a lot of HCl vapor, gaseous material reacting even with the atmosphere that went up in through the, the vents to the rooftop. So it was a pretty dramatic reaction, uh, but it kind of indicated to me when I was seeing it that, well, yeah, here's a reaction that you can put together. You don't necessarily need a Bunsen burner. You can actually use uh, light energy, and you could also use other forms of energy. So I'll do some more reactions here for you. Let me put this on pause, and then we'll come back. The third reaction I want to show you is one that's really important to everybody around the world. This is a reaction that produces ammonia gas, and ammonia gas is utilized in making fertilizer. So in order for farmers to grow crops, uh, for industries to uh, produce products, uh, ammonia is a very important component and a very re important reactant. Uh, so in effect, we can say that the, the world is fed because of the reaction that occurs up here because this makes the fertilizer ingredients for uh, growing our crops. Uh, I have hydrogen gas, H2, nitrogen gas, N2, and then over here is our ammonia. And if you looked at the, uh, the naming of it, uh, it's commonly known as ammonia, but you could also call it by nitrogen trihydride because there's one nitrogen, three hydrogens in it. Okay, so let's set up our bookkeeping, our atom keeping. I'll list my elements, H and N. As I look at the reaction, oops, let me, let me do that a little darker for you. H and N, let me... Uh, count the number of each element that we have. On the reactant side, I have two hydrogens. On the product side, I have three hydrogens, and I want to get them even. Well, one of the tricks I've learned is if you have them odd numbers like that, what you're going to do is you're going to use the numbers in reverse positions to uh, become the coefficients for the, the compounds or elements. So. I'm going to put a uh, 2 in front of the NH3. There's a 2 here. As soon as I put that 2 in, that tells me that I have 2 times ammonia, or 2 times the 3 hydrogens that are here, for a total of 6 hydrogens. So I'll put 6 down here. I come to this side. That was a 3 over there times 2. What number that makes is a 6, so what co coefficient can I put in front of this to give me 6 hydrogens, and that coefficient would be a 3. Now, 3 times 2 is 6, 2 times 3 is 6, so they're matched. The final thing that i got to do is look at the nitrogens. There are 2 on this side, reactant side, and now I look at the fact that I have 2 ammonias, so I have 2 nitrogens on that side pretty much close to being balanced. The one last thing I want to do is I want to put a 1 in front of the nitrogen. 1 times 2, 2. A lot of books and some professors and teachers don't require their students to put the 1 in front of a compound or an element. 
Uh, in my classes, I ask my students to do it. Even they're understood to be a one, I ask them to put it in. It's a kind of like a little safeguard to make sure I know what's there. All right, I'm going to put you on pause again. For our next reaction, I'm going to take a reaction that occurs uh, anytime I have a piece of aluminum sitting out in the air, a reaction that occurs with the oxygen in the air. So on this uh, reactant side, I have aluminum metal, and then we're going to add to that some oxygen in the form of a gaseous substance. And eventually what it's going to produce is aluminum oxide. Now, this reaction takes place. If I take a piece of uh, very clean aluminum, maybe sand it a little bit, uh, as soon as I've scratched the surface of it, it is readily available to react with oxygen. And it forms a very thin, almost in a, a transparent or invisible film made of aluminum oxide. And that protects the aluminum from further degradation or uh, breaking down. And in fact, like here in school, we have our windows. They're all framed in aluminum. Uh, the cross on the STEM building here is made of aluminum. So once those materials are made, the coating on them, the aluminum oxide, prevents the aluminum from reacting further and it protects it. You don't have to paint it. It's not going to rust. It's going to last for hundreds of years. It doesn't degrade very easily. Uh, it depends on what you put with it, but uh, just in the natural atmosphere, uh, it's not going to break down. Okay, let's list our elements. We've got aluminum and oxygen. I look at a count here. Uh, I've got three oxygens on this side. I've got two oxygens on this side. Okay, I want to try to get them even. So something I just showed you a little bit ago. I'm going to put the coefficients 2 and 3 in here in a kind of reverse order. So I'll put a 2 in front of aluminum oxide. I'll put a 3 in front of oxygen. When I count the oxygens on this side, I have 3 times 2. That's 6. Over here, with 2 aluminum oxides, I have 2 times 3, or 6 oxygens. So I've made the oxygens even. Let's now check the aluminums. 2 times Al2, that's going to be 4 aluminums. Over on this side, I don't have anything listed, so I'll put a 4 in front of this aluminum. Then that makes a combination of 4 aluminums on each side. So the combination here works very nicely. I have balanced the chemical equation. Uh, and this set of numbers, a 4, a 3, and a 2, works very well. Now, for the people who uh, can see this, uh, there's also the possibility that I could have for my coefficients a 2 here and a 1 over here. What would this coefficient would be? It would be half of 3. I could put 1.5 down as that coefficient. So sometimes you'll see chemical equations where they use... Uh, larger numbers, or sometimes you'll see them reduced to a lower set of numbers. Both will work. I could also use, instead of 1.5, I could use the fraction 3 over 2. And what I've done is I've divided both sides uh, of the equations uh, coefficients by 2. 2 into 4, 2. 2 into 3, 3 halves. 2 into 2, 1. It's still the same set of ratios, and it's still a balanced equation when I count the atoms up. Now, I'll stop once again, and we'll try to do one more video.